on our pumpkin patch layout, which is number five for September. I used the October 2019 and I picked this blueprint just so I could use this chipboard right here, which is the hexagon with the pumpkins and the leaves. Um, sometimes when, you know, I'm picking out my blueprint, if I already have embellishments, the embellishments will definitely help me dictate what um, layout I use, not just the photos. So that is exactly what I did here. You're gonna have pretty much everything on here. Remember, you're starting up over at this top piece and working your way across for this layout. And let's go over some of the basics of actually how we do the chipboard on this one because we definitely have a new technique that we've never done before, which is going to be the painting of the pumpkins. And let's talk about that and some other things with this blueprint. But our whole point of this layout and using this hexagon is so it looks good with our big chippy. Pieces that we need for the September pumpkin patch layout I have put out here. So we're gonna be using our hexagon template and our hexagon punch. Those are the things that we're gonna need at first in order to do this, plus our zig writer. If you're new to our templates, um, these templates are always labeled exactly the same. They're labeled from the smallest to the biggest. So if you're looking at them, you label number one will be your smallest and you keep working your way up until you get all the way to number 10. This template's slightly confusing because we had to put different sizes mixed in instead of going from biggest to smallest. And the reason for that is so I could get as many hexagons in here as I wanted. Our hexagons go up by a quarter inch. So number one is a quarter inch smaller than number two and so on and so forth. So for this blueprint, it really should say on here that these are number one, but it's something that I missed. So next time we'll fix that. But this is temp or number one, and you could hand cut your hexagons just by tracing these and cutting them with your scissors. But you should have, most of my customers will already have the hexagon punch from Fiskars, and that's what we use. We just slide it in there, punch it, and it's quick, simple, and painless. Now, if you are doing this layout, it does say on here that you're going to start right here in the top left-hand corner. You should put all of your paper pieces, paper hexagons on first, and then go back and draw the ones with your zig writer. There's no dotting, no dashing. This is just an outline of the hexagon um, on top of your background paper, which is the wood. Let's set that aside and the template our zig writer and talk about um, what we're gonna be doing for our colors here. So on this layout, this piece of paper right here with all the pumpkins, all we do with this is cut out the pumpkins and some of the leaves. Now you are cutting out a lot of pumpkins and a lot of leaves. Pretty much if they're on here, you're cutting them out. Now I didn't do very many of the teensy tiny ones, just a couple here and there. Um, I did all of the big ones that were definitely full pumpkins. The more the merrier when you're talking about the pumpkin patch. So this piece, only for cutting. And then all of these are for cutting our hexagons out. So when you're cutting your hexagons out, if we're looking at our blueprint, this is going to be your orange, that polka dotted piece. The check from uh, Doodlebug is going to be the blue. And then I use the back side of that for the gingham paper. And that's going to be your pink. The green is gonna be this beautiful print from Graphic 45, and the yellow is gonna be your pumpkin. So this is really cool layout where it kind of comes from the lightest of the orange into the darkers, into this fun pumpkin on your blueprint. So let's set the pattern pieces aside and talk about our chipboard. Cause this is definitely something very different that we have not done before with our chipboard pieces. So um, some of these are going to be inked with the Vintage Photo ink, and I'm going to be using the Dabber to do this. 
And then some parts of this are also gonna be using gilding polish. The gilding polish that I'm using is called Razmatza, which I hope I'm saying that right, but who knows. It's a luster polish. The luster polishes have mica in them. So it doesn't technically really have glitter, it has mica. And then I'm also using the Tango Tees. So two colors on this is what I'm using to actually make these pumpkins. And I'm gonna do two different colors on the words. And then my um, chipboard, um, oh Lord, I hate when I can't remember what I'm thinking of. Tractor, thank you, is just gonna have the brown vintage photo on it. So with this, we're actually doing some painting. So make sure you get out a couple different types of paint brushes um, for yourself. Anytime you're working with your gilding polish, you definitely should have your water. And once you have that out, we're gonna grab a scrap piece of paper in order to start this. And I'm gonna start with the vintage photo. And I like to get rid of all the negative pieces that need to be fallen away. Now, this one is a little bit different, whereas we are, we actually have the pumpkins and those are engraved. So the pumpkins are engraved and there's nothing to push out. We're keeping it exactly the way that it is. We wanna get rid of all these pieces in the leaves that should be fallen. Now, anytime I'm doing this, I like to give my pieces a tap and then they start to fall away. And a lot of times I can just pick them out. But these are super gentle. So don't be like manhandling and mangling. The easiest way to do it <clears throat> is to just pop them out, pop them through, but be gentle about it. or push them the other way. Just It doesn't matter which way they come. You just gotta be super, those are really delicate pieces. Um, there's lots of layering going down, so if you break it or cut it, it it's not ever going to really matter because you definitely can glue it down so you don't see it. But you know, we try our best to keep everything together and nice and neat. And the easiest way to do that is to have a little bit of patience, which you guys know I have none of. <laughs> so I break things a lot, that's okay. All right, so that's all clean. This stays the way that it is. And I'm gonna cover this with um, the vintage photo dabber. Everybody should have a vintage photo dabber. So look at what I'm doing. I'm doing the stem first, but I am not gonna do the whole pumpkin because the pumpkin, we are actually going to use the gilding polish with our paint brushes. So I'm gonna cover the leaves generously. And then that whole hexagon Okay, so that looks pretty good for this. While I've got this out, I'm gonna do the other pieces that I need, which is the whole tractor. Okay. And then on the words, I'm actually gonna do half of it in the gilding polish, and I'm gonna do the other half in the chocolate, or the um, the vintage photo. So, so from farm to down to perfectly pump, plump, those are gonna be the brown. Vintage photo. So give that a nice coat and then we can set that aside. 
and we're pretty much done with this. So you can put the lid back on as long as, you know, you feel this is dark enough, which I feel like I want a little layer there. Now my layout's already done. I'm doing these demos for you guys to help you understand the big chippy, make it easy for the new people because these are techniques a lot of you have been doing, but some of you who have not, we've always got new people coming in. And okay, so with that, now we're gonna start the next step. So I have the um, Raz Matza and I have the Tango Tees. We're gonna actually start with Tango Tees. Remember when you're using these gilding polishes, you have to line up in between the four notches. If it's not lined out, up, it will not pop out just like that. And oh, look at that. The luster is always a nice thin, that looks beautiful. So, I am going to just confirm here something. Yes, okay. For a second there, I had to think, is this really the color I used? <laughs> Boy, it's a long night. I'm doing a lot of videos today. So get your palette knife out. This is the best $2 and some odd cents you'll spend. And it's so helpful with your um, actual um, sponges and you're using the gilding polish. So this has <clears throat> our Tango Tees. We're going to cover the whole top half that we didn't do. Don't get it on the other one like I just did. Be neat. And you can see that little bit of shine from the mica. So you use this gilding polish just like you use any other. We do coats. And the more coats you do, the better because it should look exactly like it does in the pod. So it should look just like that when we're done, the color. Push it in there and then pull it all off. All right, now that was two coats. I want a third coat because I always do. Just to confirm, I got everything and it looks really solid. Yep, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And the mica, don't rub it off because those little flecks, you'll kind of like rub them off if you do that. Do that more, drop and twist, drop and twist, drop and twist, okay? So let's set that aside. And then I'm gonna try to use my sponge for most of this just cause it's quick. So put some mica, or <laughs> put some gilding polish on there. And then we're gonna be a little bit more careful and we're gonna try to not hit the leaf too much. Now, if you're not gentle, if you feel like, oh, that's gonna be really hard not to hit the stems and not to hit the leaves, this is where you're gonna pull out your paintbrush. So, pull out your paintbrush, get some on there, and then just paint. Try not to go too heavy handed because I left all these engraved pieces so it gives the pumpkin some dimension. So if you have a lot that you're putting on there, you may actually want to just, you know, rub a little bit off onto your sponge or to the side of the, um, the dish. Take your time. I love this. Something totally new, 
different way to apply your gilding polish. And the thing is, is uh, you know, I could do each one of these leaves a different color if I wanted to, but it's really the pumpkins that I wanted to focus on. Um, I like to do the in, the engraving on the chipboard, so I'll definitely be doing more of that in the future when, you know, there's more hours in a day and I can, you know, do all the stuff I plan to do. Oh, goodness. But um, there's lots of examples, too. Like, there's certain words that you guys have seen me use, like summer fun, and it's connected all together. And maybe I want to highlight the word summer in yellow and then do the chipboard, um, the, the fun in just the chipboard color, like, you know, vintage photo. And this is how I would do it. I would use a paintbrush. So you're gonna keep adding the coats until you have it a solid color, just like we did to the words. And then the, the other color that we're using is slightly darker and redder. And we're gonna go back and we're gonna highlight these um, pieces that I left engraved that make the shape of the pumpkin. We're gonna give it some dimension, some depth. And you could texturize these by using, you know, do not buy expensive brushes, not for stuff like this. Just buy a cheap brush that if, you know, if it gets ruined, it's no big deal. Okay. I feel like that looks pretty good. I'm satisfied with the color of it. <clears throat> and I'm going to check this and confirm because the mica is a little bit different. Sometimes it, you know, needs a secondary coat. So I'm just gonna go over this one more time. All right, that looks pretty good to me, awesome. Now, this is one that you add very, very little water to. I have been adding water, but I am not kidding, just a few drops. I have had no problems with the um, lusters drying out. So you wanna just use a very little, okay? So if it says luster polish on it, it has mica in it, and it's different than the others. Now, this also is a luster polish too. So it's got the mica and it's darker. So I'm gonna take the top off. I'm not using the sponge on this, so I don't need that. And I'm just quickly gonna wipe my brush off or uh, normally I have like a little cup of water that I just throw them into until I can get to cleaning it, but otherwise just wipe it off. You can reuse the same brush. We're just using orange on orange, or you can do a smaller brush because now we're going in and we're highlighting all these areas that have that little bit of engraving. We're giving it some shadow. So I'm gonna start by just using this brush, dipping it in. Load up your brush. The way to load up a brush is to dip it in and then wipe everything off. And you do that a few times. You know, we always talk about loading our sponge, but this is how you load a brush, okay? And this you're gonna need a little bit more because we're doing highlights. So we're gonna do right around the top, pretty heavy. So it's gonna be pretty dark and it is a gilding polish. So it's going to need coats. And then we're gonna do those little tiny spots. I'm gonna see if maybe I can get you guys closer to it. There we go, let's try that for you. So you really see what I'm doing. Cause I'm really just highlighting what's already there, all of these lines. So very heavy at the bottom. And remember, if you don't like it, we'll just cover it with the Tango Tees again and start over. So the full lines here, I'm trying, I'm, I'm kind of pulling that all the way through. So I'm gonna pull it all the way through on this pumpkin that looks like it sits on top. 
and then heavy right here, heavy at the bottom. That's why there's so many of these little lines to really give it that shape and dimension to make you see that pumpkin. And then pull through, I just, oh my gosh. I love fall, I love the pumpkins, and this is just so fun and very cute. Now, I could stop here, but I think I'm just gonna take, just like I would with my gilding polish if I was using a sponge, and I'm gonna go over it all with one more coat. So you really see what I was trying to highlight. So those of you gilding polish crazy ladies out there, which, you know, is most of us at this point, because I use them so much and I really do love them. Um, this is just a whole nother way to really use that gilding polish you have just like it was paint. And you can do it on so many things. You could accent your pattern paper, your chipboards, your embellishments, I mean, flowers, you know, if you have flowers and they're not the right color for your layout, you just go over it with gilding polish that is in the right color. All right, that is good for me. I love how that looks. I'm gonna stop there and then I'm gonna let this dry. So let's put the lid on this. Mm -mm. A smidge of water, cause I know it's the right thing to do with these. <clears throat> And you know, this we put on pretty heavy. So when you're doing this, you make sure that dries before you start doing anything else, okay? Don't start to glue it down or turn it over. Let it fully, fully dry. And then there's one last thing I wanna talk to you about this layout because unfortunately some of you um, can't get what I used and some of you will already have it. So on this pumpkin patch layout, let's make sure I can get you guys seeing this. Okay, small, there we go. So after I let these pumpkins dry and I have my whole page embellished, I would have my picture on, then I would add these, then I would add, you know, all the other stuff. I would go back and do the gilding polish, or not the gilding polish, the glitter glue. So the glitter glue that I used is orange peel. Orange peel is a discontinued color. It's not one that we can sell anymore, but it's what I chose to use. So if you have orange peel, great, you use it. But if you do not, I will recommend that you use Sunburst. That is the color that I think will give you the most look like this. Now, when I did apply this, it's really heavy handed. You know, a lot of times I'm showing you guys dots, delicate, just in some spots, not this. This, I really just put a nice dollop on and it looks very orange, looks extremely orange right there, but when it dries, it dries a little bit more opaque and yellow, okay? So that is what I used, really heavy. And what you're doing is you're accenting the lines that the artist has already made on these pumpkins. That's all you should be doing. And the same thing with your chipboard piece. Okay, ladies, this is a great layout. I had a lot of fun making it. I hope the video is helping. Um, and if you have any questions, you guys will let me know.